Let's see how you rose to become one of Rupert Murdoch's most trusted um, lieutenants. I mean, you had a very itinerant early life. You were born in Bootle in the north um, of England. Your father was a, a sergeant in the army and you moved around all over the world, you know, Libya, Egypt, Singapore, Germany and so on. And um, newspapers, of course, in those days were the most important source or the mm. most important source of news. There was a radio, of course, as well. But did you even at that very early age realise how much influence and power they could hold? Yes, well, I write a lot about this in my book, and it's called The Bootle Boy because I, I began there and spent... It's called Bootle Boy, An Untidy Life in News. An Untidy Life yeah. in News. Mm -hmm. I, I, I could have said extremely untidy, <laughs> but I thought untidy would do. Uh, and and um, I... It's, it's true, actually, because I, always, I became very interested in news when I was 11 or 12, and I read a couple of great crusading articles, one in the Daily Mirror involving a woman called Ruth Ellis, who was hanged for That's having a, a British, a, a woman, British yeah, she was yeah, hanged yeah. in Britain for having for having murdered her boyfriend, and there was a massive feeling of against that capital punishment in this country when it happened. And I remember reading the passion of that and feeling really. Uh, sort of moved by it, and I think that's the first time I thought how powerful newspapers could be, could be, and how much I wanted to work for them. And I was 11 or 12 years old, and those were the days when there were more than two or three newspapers in virtually every single household in the country, and only two television stations. So there was much more power and many more newspapers in those days. So when you were 15, your family moved to Australia, and that's when you got your first job um, on a newspaper, The News, in Adelaide as yes. a copy boy. And um, you, you say um, in your memoir that, um, that newspapers are a high-functioning dictatorship. Yes. Yeah, what do you mean by that? I mean that I mean that that unlike any other institution or operation that I'm familiar with, because of the deadlines. I mean, I suppose a, 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 ba a battle commander would compare because so many quick decisions need to be made that there can only be so much room for democratic process. And it's the same in television when there's a late night show and a decision about what to wear, what not to wear. Someone's got to make that decision, and so because of that need for speed. Uh, then the authority and obedience in a newspaper right. gravitates to the, num the man at the top. All right, then, then in the mid... That's when you met Rupert Murdoch, by the way, as you said, when you were on the news. But in the mid-70s, you got a job in Murdoch's new operation in New York. And you say, we newcomers were devoted to the boss. Um, we moved from business to business, taking over newspapers, buying magazines, moving into television, and all the while professing not to give a damn what the rest of the media world thought. It was a very populist approach, not Pulitzer Prize-seeking kind of journalism, wasn't it? Wasn't it? it was very I, I, populist. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy with the description of, of, of us when, we, when I was there, along with others, because there was a the, the, the American media, the American press, were then even more than they are now, and they still are, very self-important. And we came in with a with a Sydney and Fleet Street style of popular newspapers and approach to popular newspapers, and they absolutely loathed it. And while there were many uh, matters on which they had a good cause to loathe it, there was still something quite wonderful about upsetting them so much.